Today I'm gonna tell you about a quite unusual metal, dysprosium. As it is clear from the element's unusual name, dysprosium belongs to the lanthanide series, where it is preceded by terbium. Like other rare earth metals, dysprosium can be found in various minerals, such as xenotime, monocyte and gadolinite. The name dysprosium is derived from the Greek dysprositos, meaning hard to get, because it is very hard to extract pure metal from its ore and separate it from other metals. Pure dysprosium is a grey metal. My sample is pretty old and has covered in grey oxide layer. Dysprosium is a pretty expensive metal and it costs about $20 on eBay. Its physical properties are not that much different from other lanthanides, although I have begun to question that. For instance, a Wikipedia article about the metal in English says that dysprosium metal is very soft and that it can even be sliced with a knife. Hmm, let us check. As you can see, I cannot cut it with a knife, although it's possible to cut off a small piece. Probably my sample is just fragile because of its porous structure. That is why it is always important to check if the information is true. Also, dysprosium gets attracted to a powerful neodymium magnet quite well, of course not good as iron. Nevertheless, dysprosium is paramagnetic at room temperatures, but if frozen to the temperature of liquid nitrogen, it can become ferromagnetic. This property of the metal has application in special alloy called terphenol D, the formula of which you can see on your screen. This alloy has a unique property called magnetostriction. To put it simply, if a pole made of this alloy is inserted inside a copper wire coil and alternating current is passed through it, such a pole will be slightly lengthening upon magnetizing and shortening upon demagnetizing. In an alternating magnetic field, the pole can quickly change its size and make vibrations that can turn into music. This is where this property of terphenol D is used, in vibration speakers. Not a long time ago, I bought this device, and it's awesome. If it is turned up to the maximum and held in a hand, almost nothing can be heard. But if it is put on a table... The power of rare earth metals can immediately be seen. The thing is, the vibrations from the pole are passed onto any surface. In a sense, I'm making such an object a gigantic speaker itself. The speaker can be placed on wardrobe, a washing machine, or other objects, all of which sounds differently. When turned up to the maximum, the speaker can even jump up along with other objects on the table because of the powerful bass sounds. It's a very interesting device that was designed thanks to the properties of the rare earth metals. However, these are not all properties of dysprosium. From a chemical point of view, this metal as well as other lanthanides dissolves well in hydrochloric acid, producing dysprosium chloride, a compound of slightly yellow color. With tungstates or vanadates, it produces insoluble dysprosium salt, the formula of which you can see on the screen. Dysprosium trivalent compounds are now used in catalysts and are also used in powders lumina force based on strontium aluminate. Adding dysprosium salts to such powders increases lumina force persistence thanks to the unique electronic structure of dysprosium's atoms. Dysprosium compounds are used with calcium chloride or calcium fluoride since electro crystals in radiation detectors. Moreover, dysprosium can also be ground on a grinding wheel. Produced small particles will beautifully burn down with slightly greenish flames and forming with oxygen dysprosium oxide. 
To sum up, I can say that dysprosium is very interesting and rare metal that can turn an object into a speaker. If you would like to support the continuous production of science videos like this one, please support channel on Patreon, link in the video description. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting 